Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. It is me, and I have decided to finally come back to YouTube after lots of consideration. I have also decided to kind of rebrand myself in that I am now going to be focusing nearly solely on Transformers reviews as it is the franchise in which I have the most figures of. And I've come to the decision because I it felt like my YouTube career is kind of being aimless and I was just posting all willy-nilly and really inconsistently, but now that I have a central theme to my channel, I now have decided that maybe that's the direction I need to go in. And we'll see how it plays out, and I hope you guys will enjoy. Uh, obviously, I'll probably post some other reviews on other stuff that I have, um, because, you know, maybe to spice up this consistency, but that's probably later down the line. Uh, but... Without any dilly-dallying, um, here is my review on the Earthrise War for Cybertron Trilogy Kill Cliff Jumper. Excuse me. Uh, so this guy, man, is he tiny. <laughs> I'm sorry. But, like, he is so small. And for a deluxe price point, that is a bit big for something so small. But honestly, I feel like it's worth it. And he isn't even going up in price. Like, I haven't seen him hike up in price on Amazon or anything. I found this guy in a store, actually. And I got really lucky. Um, but yeah, uh, for a small figure, he is chocked full of posability. He has more posability, I think, than like the Voyager class sound wave, which I have. Um, first, let's start off. He has a... He, he can't look up or down or barely even. I think there's a ball joint in his head. Yeah, there's a ball joint in his head. Um... His shoulders are fully articulated. You know, he can go up that far or down that far. He can swivel here. Uh, he can do a full bicep curl. He can even do this number, which only makes sense in the transformation. He has, you know, bicep swivel. And he has an actually articulated wrist. Like, yeah. A, for some reason, a lot of the War for Cybertron trilogy figures just don't have articulated wrists, which I don't understand. And he has a swivel waist, uh, but not much movement. This is more so for the transformation and that he can bend back this far. He's got fully articulated knees. He can kick. He doesn't have any, like, he doesn't have any other, like, uh, ankle articulation besides this really nice ankle pivot. But again, transformation. A lot of the times when it comes to smaller figures or transformers or just transformers in general, their articulation is directly linked to their uh, to their transformability. Uh, but yeah, he has the the most like rigid part of him is his feet. All he does, all he has, is this, and that's about it. You can't move his foot forward or backward. Uh, but yeah, all in all, this guy, while small, he packs a lot of posability. And his accessories, you, you just get this bazooka. But the bazooka can actually split off. <sighs> That's a really tight fit. Uh, as you can see, I lost a piece already. Because, you know, I'm, I'm pretty irresponsible with my toys. And honestly, this is actually really nice. He gets two twin pistols uh, with this bazooka. And with his, uh, with his good posability, you can get like poses like this one right here. Right here, if you have a stand, you can get him into, like, you know, diving backwards, like, gun poses, and all that. Uh, with a bazooka, there's not much you can do. You can have him dual wield it and, you know, fire it, but that's not much. <sighs> Let's put that back. Also, even though I have him in his box, I kind of don't recommend it because he's really flimsy in his box. Like, he does not snap into anything twist ties actually um held him up like, like yeah it's, it's really easy to just dislodge him like that but anyway his box really nice as well i forgot to talk about this because i had already unboxed him this took like a couple of takes honestly but anyway yeah, let me just reassemble the box right here this is a really nice box. I like the color scheme of the Earthrise uh, line. It, I think it, it has a better color palette than the Siege. As you can see right here. Yep, here's the side uh, art. 
unfortunately my camera's kind of low right now because I have a kind of ghetto setup. I haven't leaned against something actually. But anyway, uh, let's get into the guy's transformation first. So, mm, I've never been a fan of parts forming. Let's just get that out of the way. I don't like it when things dislodge from a figure in order for a transformation to work. But, you know, we're just going to have to bear with it. So, what you first do is take this out, flip this up. That covers his head. Take that off. Then you bend his uh, him backwards. Uh, let's see here. Go ahead and put his arms like this. You can see here. Those snap in, hopefully. Hold on. I, I screwed that up. Oh, I apologize. I forgot to do this. You're actually supposed to swivel his his uh his cab. Fucking yeah. I'm I don't have a I'm I'm not good at transforming things honestly. So this is like the first time I'm trying to actually transform him on camera, and it is just not agreeing. There we go. Finally. All right. So now that you have that. You now work on his feet. Let's go ahead and. Here, let me actually take it step by step. Let me go slowly, because this is just not... So what you do is you flip this out. You then point this forward. Flip out his wheels. Do the same thing on the other side. Then, as you see here, you then fit those. And then these side panels... You uh, plug in, or you, you know, snap them in. Then finally, the, uh, the hood, the uh, trunk of the car, there's this little peg here that you uh, push in, and then you slide these two pegs into his fists. And there you have it. Uh, this definitely screams 80s type of car. Like, this is something you would see on the road, like, um, like still today. It's kind of, it would be kind of beat up, but it would still run well. Um, I believe this is modeled after, like, a Mitsubishi Starion, which was a really popular car in the 80s, and it came usually in this, like, red color. Uh, you'd see them on the road all the time back in the early 2000s because they were just a really good car. But yeah, this guy, like... The, the the stuff they had to go through is kind of a hassle, but this is honestly just really nice. Like it's it's a really nice car mode, I have to admit. And like I'm I'm just happy that we get like regular car because since Siege came out we just got like these like Cybertronian hybridizations of uh like regular cars and I'm happy that we're getting like just normal vehicles now that we're in Earthrise. We're back on Earth. Um, anyway, he has this peg right here, uh, as you can see, and you can actually slot in his bazooka, kind of. You actually need to disassemble it a bit for it to actually plug it in. And, like, he comes with a tiny little uh, trunk-mounted blaster. But, yeah, let's, uh, let's, let's compare his size with other figures right now. This is a really tight fit. I'm sorry. <clears throat> there we go. And there you have it. Anyway, I have three figures in which I'm going to compare his sizes, starting with the smallest. Uh, here is Prime uh, Soundwave right here. As you can see, this is how small he really is. Like, that's pretty small. Next is... Damn. Next is... Jesus Christ, this is huge. All right, I'm going to need to actually set up a higher stand to actually, you know, convey the size difference. So, right here. Yeah, this thing. This guy is big. 
and like he, he barely comes up to his foot and i have an even bigger figure right here this is the masterpiece sound wave jesus christ anyway uh let's just transform him back real quick and we're gonna do another size comparison with his robot form so what you do is then take this off right here Go ahead and uh, dislodge those Eh, this is precarious. I don't want to chip any more paint because uh, I'll show you guys in a bit. Um, this guy can suffer from paint chipping in certain places. Which is, you know, with Transformers figures, like, it should be like an obvious, like, thing. Like, yeah, of course, they're going to paint chip their Transformers. You have to handle them. Not like a regular figure. You don't need to be careful. Mm-hmm. But as you can see, right here on his shoulders, I don't know if you can see that. I'm going to put him in the light a bit. Uh, he has some paint chipping right here. Like, right on his shoulders. And it doesn't look terrible. Like, it kind of looks like he's a little beat up. But, like, yeah, I was kind of disappointed. And this peg right here, uh, it's this black spot right here. Uh, some people say it's kind of hard to get out. I don't have a problem with it because I just kind of roll it with my finger. But, yeah. I've always, I've never liked parts for him. But anyway, um, with his with his car mode, he was really small. But you can really see how just just how small he is when in robot form. He doesn't really change that much. Anyway, here's the uh, Prime Soundwave as a comparison. Now this this toy was like sold for like fifteen bucks before, like back in like twenty. I want to say thirteen. Um, yeah, and he was, he was a lot cheaper, and he's bigger too, but he has less articulation, and he's kind of stiff, I'd say. This is the Cybertron, this Fall of Cybertron sound wave, and see, he's just a lot bigger, he barely comes up to his forearm. And then, here is the Masterpiece sound wave, eesh, he, he's the same size as his calf, good lord. But anyway, uh, just Cliff Jumper himself, he is actually a, I think he's a great figure. And I honestly, he is like one of my favorites in my collection right now. His entire arm was like backwards and I didn't even notice. But anyway, um, he is just a nice figure. Um, $20 seems a bit high for a figure this small. But if you are a fan of Transformers and you just really like how this thing looks, I'd say get it. He's definitely worth it because he's like, even though he is small, he's still got that like, he's still got that like ferocity to him or ferocity to him. I do not know words, but he just has that like kind of like gung ho attitude, even though he's so small and He's just packed with articulation. His transformation is pretty good, save for this backpack. Um, and honestly, I just, I really do recommend this figure if you are a fan of Cliff Jumper. This is the first time he's ever gotten a, like, original figure in a while, actually. Most of them have always been Bumblebee repaints. And now that we have an original um, Cliff Jumper, it seems like. If we do get a Bumblebee, he will be based on this, which is a first in the series. And that Bumblebee is going to be based off of Cliff Jumper. And we're not even getting, like, a Cliff Jumper, or I mean, a Bumblebee in the coming future. We're getting, like, I think it's Hubcap, who is a orange faced yellow repaint of this figure right here. I don't know if I'm correct. I'm going to have to search it up. But, um, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. This is definitely a, uh, I'm going to be trying to do a consistent, um, schedule for my uploads, and I'm also going to do a kind of, like, weekly, like, consistent, um, what's it called, routine, in that every Sunday, I want to review a Soundwave figure, uh, and I'm going to be calling it Soundwave Sundays, but I'll see you guys later in the next video. I hope you guys enjoyed and, you know, keep collecting.